following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Let's go, baby. Are you ready for a break? Uh, yes. Are you ready for a break? Absolutely. Ready for a break? Yeah, and um, so much for that. It's time for The Break on DallasCowboys.com. We were on the break! With Nick Eatman, David Hellman, Ambar Garcia, and Derek Eagleton. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Welcome back, guys, to another episode of The Break. I'm here with Nick And Dave, we are going to be breaking down the Lions' defense today. But to start the show, I want to get an update on these injured guys that were out yesterday and kind of see what's going on there today. What's the update for? Uh, Lyle Collins is still absent from practice. Connor Williams is too, but we knew that. Jeff Heath is doing rehab. I don't think he's going to actually practice today. Amari Cooper was rehabbing and doing injured guy things. Didn't see him actually practicing, but he was inside with everybody else. Not sure what that means for his participation level, but... Classic case of a guy who's trending toward getting ready. I'm tempted to think that that's just going to be the norm for him for the rest of the year. Um, Michael Bennett's back from his excused absence, whatever it was. Uh, Yeah, all things considered. Oh, Zach Martin's back too. All things considered. Not not too shabby. Not too shabby. Jeff Heath. Uh, What about C.J. Goodwin? Back. He's back at practice. Returned. It's not as yeah. He returned. It was his ankle, not his back, but he's back. Now, before the show, I asked some people on on Twitter to send me some questions. So, if you guys want to send some more, hit us at Cowboys Break. I saw one of them, which I honestly have not thought of this this way. But you know, we keep asking and wondering why are the Cowboys having slow starts mm-hmm. now with having so many. Um, guys being out during practice time, you know, due to injuries and the lack of them being present and being able to participate, could that be a reason why the Cowboys are having slow starts and maybe just takes them like a quarter to kind of get back on track? I, I would buy that if they were going three and out and punting right off the bat, which has happened maybe once or twice, but for the most part, they're driving the ball. They're getting down there. They're getting in position of you know field goal or maybe red zone, and then something messes up early in the game, a drop pass or a penalty or missed field goal or a drop pass or poor decision to make the field goal attempt You know that early in the game. Just from, that, from that yard line? From that yard line. I think, there, I think somebody looked up the stat. Maybe you may have heard this. It was like the... First time someone's tried a field goal 55 yards or more in the first drive of the game in like 12 years. I mean, it just doesn't happen a lot. I, yeah, that reminds me of a stat. I think our friend Bob Sturm had it. Um, something they're like only, only four or like only eight field goals have been attempted from that range that early in the game, like ever. And yeah. four of them are Jason Garrett. Decision. Oh, no. Yeah. Really? I mean, it's. I. Yeah. I don't want to paraphrase, but it's something like that. We believe in our guys. I, I <laughs> believe in Brett Maher. We'll Absolutely. Believe, I mean, you know what? Believe in Chris Jones that he's going to get the ball down to the eight yard line, fair catch, and believe in the defense for stopping him. And then you'll get the ball at midfield and let's do it again. That's what I would believe in. But whatever. I, where are you getting that? Like, where where would you get that information from? That it's Garrett's decision. Out that, of those times. Well, just how many field goals there have been. And then they're like, well, if it says. I, I guess, I mean, the Cowboys with Jason Garrett as the coach. I mean, right. so I'll try to find it. It was it blew my mind when I saw it. I don't know about it. the injuries affecting it just because I think that they, they've actually moved the ball pretty well. They yeah. just, they just something's messing them up early in the game. They're not. It's a, it's a good thought, you yeah. know, because we keep trying to find answers trying here. To find something. You know, the media keeps asking, like, asking Jason Garrett. I mean, they ask the players. No one really has an answer as to why they're having these types of starts. I mean, the offense really hasn't 
been great. The defense got a couple of turnovers in the Philadelphia game, right? And then they were able to punch it in. But as far as taking the ball and driving it, but I would argue with you that you're, yeah, like they're not going three and out. Like I'm thinking about the Packers game right now. They looked great right up until that ball bounced off Amari's of hands. They got to the 39 the other night. Um, and then Cobb dropped the pass that I thought was a pretty big drop in the game. And that on that third down against um, in the first drive Vikings game, yeah. yeah. I found it by the way. Pro Football Reference: four field goals attempted of over fifty three yards in the first three minutes of an NFL game since ninety four. It's happened four times in the last what is that twenty five years? Twenty five years. Uh, all, or Sunday night was the only time it's happened from a distance longer than fifty four yards. Of those four times, two of them are Jason Garrett. So, who was the other kicker? Was it Maher? Or it he... doesn't say what year. It it doesn't. It just says it's happened four times since '94. It doesn't say what years the those happened. How do you know it's Jason Garrett? Because I assume two of them were tempted by the Cowboys during Garrett's tenure as head coach. Oh, okay. I was just trying to see who the kicker was. Ten years. That's amazing. Well, but you know. I mean, uh, it's a trust. It's a trust in the defense to stop them, which they didn't. It's the trust in the kicker to make it. Well, know. another question. Speaking of the defense, you know, we we've talked about the offense and the the issues that they've had. But when you look at the defense, I see some people having concerns as to why is this defense not looking like they were looking last year. You know, you still have essentially somewhat of the same type of players. If anything you've added talent on the Man, roster it's, it's the same defense plus a couple of good players that like, should help you that's that's the baffling part about it and you know people pointed out it's you know defensive consistency especially in the nfl it's hard to translate from year to year a lot of people are making a big deal of the fact that you know i think the cowboys win eight and two in games decided by a possession or less last year and it's zero and three like that type of stuff Regression to the mean is a big thing in a league with this much parity. But it is still weird that a defense that is essentially the same, like Robert Quinn is the only major difference, uh, has had so many lapses at like doing the basic stuff, like tackling. Yeah. And I don't have a great answer. No, I, and, but you know, we did see it last year too. When teams really focus on wanting to run the ball and move you out of the way, they can do it. And the Colts did it. The Rams did it. And then, you know, this year the Packers have done it. Uh, the Vikings did it. So, so there there are some teams that have the ability to run the ball um, at will. And it's – it's and Cowboys obviously haven't won any of those games. And they really haven't been that close. I guess the Vikings game was close. But, the Vikings game was close. But for the most part, you know, when you, when you run the ball like they have – and the Cowboys tried to address it. They reached in the second round to take a defensive tackle that yeah. can't get on the field. That was a bad pick at this point. At this point, it has been a bad pick because he d does not play, and they need that position to play well. It's it's crazy. that a, I mean, that's nothing new. A guy drafted that high at a position where they're not stacked yeah. isn't playing a role at all. And that doesn't necessarily mean he'll be a bust, but... It's disappointing right now, but they but they need him to play well. Like that, they need that right. position. That that's the one thing. It's like, well, they drafted him, but they got six other guys. Well, they don't though. Uh, do you you think they were even expecting to have to need him this year? I think they expect him to be ready to play. I think that's a factor when you draft a guy in the second round. Like, is he is he going to come in and contribute? Um, but you know how they make some decisions sometimes, and it's like not necessarily for the year, but for the next year. True. Yeah. Wait, no, I mean, and we've talked about this. We're kind of, I guess we're getting off the plot of the current team, but like yeah. it just, it, it stinks, for lack of a better term, of them being like, this is the guy who can do what we need him to do, and we got to get him now, regardless of whether or not we're reaching or whatever. Like we need him in the future, he can do what we want him to do in this scheme, and we got to get him right now, even if it doesn't line up perfectly with our board. Like that's what I think happened, and the fact that he can't even get a jersey on game day only seems to emphasize that. But I would bet that they're—I don't know—I would hope that they're surprised that he can't even get into a uniform. Because he yeah. was drafted 58th overall. Yeah. I mean, that's that just shouldn't happen. Now, real quick, um, going back to Jeff Heath and 
most likely wouldn't play this weekend, I would assume, right? Or maybe you you just never know until Yeah, it's hard to tomorrow, say. I lean toward thinking maybe not. But with Darian Thompson, I know we don't get to see much of the practice, but based on the very little that you've seen and heard, how is this looking like as far as him and his participation? I, I like Thompson. I think I like Thompson better than Heath to, to play in these games now, healthy or not. I, th- I think Thompson is a, you know, he, he's playing for Heath, but he's a he's an active player. Like he's you know, he's having to play some strong safety now. He's always played free, but you see him in the backfield. You see him making some plays. I like him. I I, I like him out there. I don't think they're going to miss a whole lot there. And you miss some on special teams. But I don't think the jump from Heath to Thompson is a big, big loss. No. It, I mean, it hasn't been to this point. I think Thompson's played really well. I heard a whisper. I guess this shouldn't be surprising. But keep an eye on Heath because if he's unavailable, that leaves you with essentially three safeties and only one real fallback option. Uh, it could be a scenario where they need Josh Jones to come up from the practice squad, maybe. Hmm. Um, you know, hand, special teams, all hands on deck type of situation. They brought him here. He's been here for what, like a month? Yeah. Uh, former second round pick of Green Bay. I know a lot of people have asked about him because he was, I mean, he was a lofty draft choice. So that's something the Cowboys like to do. I don't know if that's going to happen, but if Heath really can't go, it's probably something they'll think about. All right, well, let's go ahead and take our first break. And when we come back, we'll dive into this Lions defense with the report that they've got for us. I'm Jay Novacek, former tight end for the Dallas Cowboys. Back in the day, I was the guy who always got the tough yards. And that's why I run with John Deere today. In fact, I have a John Deere 3025E tractor that can handle any yard work I need to do, even the tough yards way out back. So if you have one acre or a thousand, John Deere has the equipment that's just right for you. Visit a John Deere dealer today and run with us. We are the official tractor provider of your Dallas Cowboys. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, download the SeatGeek app and let's go. SeatGeek. Want to use what the pros use? How about the official men's skincare brand of the Dallas Cowboys, Jack Black? Right now, you can get the Jack Black Starter, a curated collection of Cowboys locker room favorites for just 10 bucks with free shipping. The starter includes four Jack Black skincare favorites plus a full-sized intense therapy lip balm. Go to getjackblack.com slash cowboys and use the code word TEAMJB. That's getjackblack.com slash cowboys. The Jack Black Starter, 10 bucks, free shipping. Ready? Okay. Give, Give me an S. 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 Give me an O. O. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. Back to the break. Oh, welcome back, guys. Now, let's talk about some Lions defense and what they got going on over there. Dave, take it away. Okay. Um, here's my thing. I, you know, I do, I, I do the draft show in the off season. It's a pet project of mine, so I'm pretty familiar with the guys that come into the league. So, first thing I do when I go down, you know, when I look at an opponent, I, I just, I write their roster out. I look at who they got, and I'm sitting here. I'm like, okay, yeah, Damon Harrison. Remember, you know, remember him from the Giants. Trey Flowers, big money free agent from the from the Pats. A. Sean Robinson, big nasty nose tackle from Alabama. Uh, Jared Davis, first-round pick out of Florida. Jelani Tavai, Dane Brugler's favorite player in last year's draft. I'm like, yeah, these guys are talented, man. This is this is good. And then you watch them play, and you look at what they've done this year, and you're like, oh, it's... Uh, that sounds kind of familiar. It doesn't look as good on paper as it should. Yeah, I, no, but 
okay, we're so hard on the Cowboys defense. They're still pretty good. Yeah. These guys aren't really. Um, they're 30th in the league in total defense, 24th in scoring, so they, they buckle down when they need to a little bit. 24th in scoring. I mean, they're, they're 30th in defense, 28th against the pass, 26th against the run, 24th in scoring. Like, So they're a little better at holding people out of the end zone than they are everywhere else. That sounds oh. pretty terrible. They are. Defense is terrible. They're not good. Um, they're nine, they have 19 sacks on the year. Uh, that's 26th in the league. They don't get a lot of takeaways either. Um, their best dude at taking the ball away, Quandre Diggs, is a Seahawk now. You might have seen him the other night getting a takeaway. Um, Who's their best player? Probably Darius Slay. Uh, Corner. Cornerback. He, he's really good. Um, that's something to watch. I wonder if he'll travel with Amari Cooper. He's a really talented, confident, press man corner. He's man-to-man a lot. He gets up on his guy. He bullies him, um, which is impressive because, like, he's not he's not this huge dude, but but he's he's good at playing press technique. Um I mean Trey Flowers is good. I, I don't he's got five sacks. I don't think that's terrible. Uh again, you know, going back to that Green Bay game, he should have had like two more that got waved off by flags. Um oh, and Justin Coleman. I'm curious to see what they do. He he's a he's kind of a badass. Uh Position. they he's their slot corner. They got him out of Seattle. Uh he's playing really well, but they traded Diggs away, so I'm curious to see how much he plays outside versus inside, but he's he's having a really nice season. He's got ten pass breakups, um, playing really well. You know, going back to what you said about Slay moving and following uh, Cooper. You know, I used to think that was kind of like a a bad thing for the Cowboys, but I kind of like it. Like I don't think that's something that that the Lions should do, or really any team travel somebody. No, because I think Gallup is probably just as good. Hold on. Gallup is probably better than a second corner. Yeah. So, I, so therefore, I don't think he'd be better than Slay. So, I don't know. I, I just look at it like I, I still uh, Cooper can win. No, that's that's the classic. I mean, that's what you, you need a number two receiver who's good enough to make a team pay for yeah. doing that type of thing. And like I said, I don't know if they will. That's fine with me though. Like I'll I'll yeah. I like Michael Gallup's chances it'd, against most number two it'd corners. It'd be one thing if you thought Slay or Xavier Howard or whoever the corner was would shut down Cooper, but I don't think he can. I don't think so. Who, who would you say would be the toughest matchup here for the Cowboys? Like across the defense, Acro- across yeah, defense yeah. versus Cowboys offense. I mean, Snacks is blocking Snacks. Yeah. Snacks has given them fits for years, and he's still a good player. He's not. I mean. He hasn't dropped off drastically. I watched two games, and I thought he looked good. Um, and so. that's one thing about Travis Frederick that you you wonder about is the strength. You know, he's he, yeah, yeah. He, the the recognition is fine, but they said with this in with with the illness that he had last year, um, strength would be an issue for him. So, I and I think we've seen that at times. And they they're adding you know Suafilo obviously that'll help with some strength. Yeah, but you know. Zach Martin's got a back injury. Much like the much like the Giants, I think this is better. This is better than the Giants, I think. But like in terms of rushing the passer, okay, you have Trey Flowers. Um but there's not there's not much else in the way of guys that are like getting a lot of push to the point that they use their Sam linebacker, uh Devon Kennard, a lot coming off the edge. So that's something tight ends should probably be watching for. Um, Witten or Jarwin, like I would bet he's going to be trying to add pressure a lot because they don't get a lot of push with just their front four, 19 sacks, uh, 26th in the league. So I like Dak's odds to have a pretty clean pocket. Um, line The linebacker play, like Jared Davis was a first-round pick out of Florida. I remember liking him a decent amount. And him and then, like I said, Jelani Tavai, he's a rookie they don't it doesn't seem like they're playing great. I was actually reading up on it from Detroit writers like again, Davis is their big first round pick. He's supposed to kind of be the center of their defense and they reduced his role in this loss to the Bears last week. Like he played fewer snaps. They gave play calling duties to a rookie over him. I was like that's probably not what you want in your first round pick. So, uh 
he gets he gets washed out of plays. Blockers get to him. He gets you know he gets picked up a lot and and doesn't get movement in the right direction fast enough to make a lot of tackles. Dalvin Cook killed them the same way. It looked a lot like watching the Cowboys game, honestly, when they, they played the Vikings a month ago and they lost 42-30. to 30. Uh, Kirk Cousins had all day. Play action worked really great. That's I got halfway through the tape against the Bears and I was like, why am I watching this? Like, Mitch Trubisky sucks, for lack of a better word. Like, I'm not getting a good... Yeah. indication of what they're capable of because they were playing great against the Bears I was like oh this is a pretty good defense and I was like they're playing Trubisky Dave why don't you go watch them against a better quarterback and I did and it wasn't very good uh, to your point um, so I mentioned Justin Coleman he's their slot guy he can play outside but if he doesn't they got a veteran corner by the name of Rashawn Melvin and he is a liability uh, he can't, <laughs> I thought you were going to say he's good no he can't cover he, I mean, he he was getting picked on. It didn't matter if it was Thielen or Diggs. Uh, they put him on Kyle Rudolph a couple times, and it was it went how you might expect, just getting bullied off the ball. So, fine. What number? Uh, twenty nine. Twenty nine in your programs. If if Darius Slay <laughs> wants to travel with Cooper, find whoever twenty nine's got, and I like that matchup a lot. Um. They they're they're susceptible over the middle of the field. That's what I wrote because their linebackers don't cover well. Tavai is like a big, bulky Mike guy. Like he's he's good. I mean he's a good player, but he coverage is in his strong suit. And then Jared Davis just doesn't look super impressive. So uh, whether that's Randall Cobb, whether you want to look, I mean I know we've kind of been talking down on it, but Jason Witten, I'm, I think he can get open against these guys. That should be there. You know, um, the middle of the field and the cornerbacks that aren't Darius Slay. I feel good about that. It was 12 years ago, I believe. But 2007, Witten had like 15 catches in a game up there. Did against he really? Detroit. Yeah, and the game winner in the final seconds of the game to win the NFC East. So it was a kind of a big game. But a lot has changed in 12 years. But I do know that he had about 15 catches that day. We don't talk about it a lot. Maybe we. I don't know. But we talked about it on Cover 4. I was like, this is a fun series. Like the games are usually really inter- yeah, Cowboys Detroit. Like it came it was a walk off field goal last year. They beat their butt in sixteen, but it was still a fun game. Dez had the trick pass to De- uh, to Witten. There it is on the screen. There you go. The, I mean, the playoff game was an instant classic. The uh Romo to Terrence and Demarcus Lawrence kind of showed up out of nowhere. Uh yeah, these are just really – yeah, this is the 13 – this is the Megatron game. You know, 329, I think, is I, I what wish, he went for. I wish you, well, they had the play in this game where um, Calvin Johnson goes about 90 yards with the ball. And this is all late in the game. This but is early in the game, he had like a catch where he went like 90 yards. And Jeff Heath caught him. Like, I know people think, wow, well, he's white safety. He's not going to run. He he fetched Calvin Johnson, which is not, he's not known for being a track guy. But anybody was, on this team will tell you Jeff Heath is very, very fast. Very fast. Uh, Maybe not today. Was he's doing No, that. no, probably not today. He's got stitches in his knee. But oh, there is Romo. I, I don't think of it as a rivalry, but like more often than not, it's very entertaining when these teams play. I think it'll, I think this particular game. We'll probably your age is helping you there because you're you're not old enough to go back to the early 2000s. Oh, sure. Some crap going on there. Of course. 2000 and the the 2001 season that was the year of 9/11. Yeah. And I believe it was that game that got pushed back mm-hmm. to the week, I guess. Or I think it was the Detroit game. They got moved to the very end of the season. So they go in and they, they play that game, and they're 1 in 15 or 1 in 14. And I'm, gonna, Cow- I'm looking this up while and you're talking. And the Cowboys are uh, four, 5 and 10. And they go and play the last game of the Superdome. Last or the, game of the, uh, the season. The Silverdome. Yeah. And it was terrible. They lost to the team. <laughs> what was the score? Um, this, I don't know. Uh, yeah, you do. I don't. Yes, but, you do. <laughs> 20 to 14. Oh, know. damn. Well, that, typically, I don't, I don't this is bad radio, but like Nick has the un, this uncanny ability to like remember the score yeah. and the date. It was 15 to 10. 15 to 10. Well, I do know that Dave Campo did not come back 
he hit vertigo. He didn't oh, fly back okay. with us that day. The, ne- the next year, we played the Lions up there, and I can promise you the score was 9-7. to seven. They lost that game. It was terrible. They booed him at Smith because he just broke the record, and they see it. the Lions fans thought it should have been Barry Sanders' record. And There's been some crappy games in this series, but lately it's been pretty good. Sorry. Nine, yeah, 9-7. to seven. You're right. Okay. I mean, more often than not. 15-10, to 10, that bothers me. I should have got that it's one. It's okay. You'll remember next time now. I guess. More often than not. I don't remember last week. In my in my experience, this has been a really entertaining series. I feel like it it won't it probably won't be this week because I mean the Lions will probably have Driscoll. It's I think it's gonna be a clunky performance. We don't trust the Cowboys to play four complete quarters. So anyway, but there are plays to be made against this defense, mainly because they don't rush the passer well and uh, I don't like the majority of their secondary. Well, let's go ahead and take our final break. Okay. And then when we come back, we'll answer some of the questions that you guys have been sending us through Twitter at Cowboys Break. Ready? Okay. Give, Give me an S. S. Give me an O. O. Give me an S. S. Give me an O. O. What's that spell? So, so. Are we going to win? Cheer. Just okay is not okay. Whether it's cheerleaders or your wireless network, AT&T is America's best wireless network. Best network based on GWS1 score September 2019. It's time for tailgating with the OtterBox boys. The OtterBox that builds those crazy protective phone cases? Yup, and now they're changing the side dish game with the OtterBox Trooper Soft Cooler. Lightweight, mobile, and leak-proof, Trooper is perfect for blitzing a crowded parking lot with a Frito pie. Amazing. Hey, you think I could fit my seven-layer salmon salad into the Trooper cooler? Yep, but please don't. And that's been Tailgating with the OtterBox Boys. Learn more about the Trooper soft coolers at otterbox.com. Whether you're into being a part of this or more into something like this, SeatGeek has the tickets to the events you love. It's the easiest way to find, buy, and sell tickets. Plus, with their deal score technology, they'll recommend the best seats in the house at the best value. So the next time you're craving this, download the SeatGeek app and let's go. SeatGeek. Hey, Cowboys Nation. This season, when the Cowboys win, you get to experience the sweet taste of victory because if the Cowboys win, the next day, Dunkin' is offering a free medium hot or iced coffee. So don't just celebrate the Cowboys' success from the sidelines. Head to Dunkin' and treat yourself to real victory because this season, Cowboys fans aren't only winning on game day, they're winning the next day, too, with a free medium coffee. Cowboys Nation runs on Dunkin'. Excludes cold brew. Limit one per guest. Participation may vary. Limited time off back to the break christmas i mean that's just it's it's here it feels like it's coming i know. don't sound so cheery about <laughs> it jeez the dallas cowboys will host, i can't do it <laughs> so will host the third annual christmas at the star present presented by albertson's and tom thumb now you saw the have you seen the christmas tree out there i mean it's already yeah, they put it up today i think it's like how how tall would you say it would be? Freaking twenty something feet. It's like at least twenty five feet tall. I it's, think it's like three stories tall. It it's ain't like forty. I mean, think, think? about. Like I mean, Sean I'm, Bradley is seven seven. I'm thinking, how many times would he? Well, maybe you're right. Maybe twenty five thirty feet. It, I don't think it's quite as big as like the Rockefeller tree in New York City, <laughs> but it's close. But it's sitting out there. It's almost there on the plaza, and it'll be the centerpiece of this awesome show that they've got. November twenty second through the December twenty first, every Friday, and Saturday night. It's really awesome out there. Presented by Albertsons and Tom Thumb, you get an opportunity to take a picture with Santa Claus. It's a good family event. For more information, go to the starinfrisco.com. Okay, thank you, Nick. Um, so Dave talked about. The possibility of uh, Dak having a clean pocket and the Cowboys O-line being able to kind of keep it clean for him. I see several people asking, why has Dak not ran with the ball, gotten outside of the pocket more and used his feet? Do you think that maybe in this game that could be a possibility where we can start seeing him run with the ball a little more? 
They need to. If they play the percentages like they say they do, there's some stats out there that when he runs the ball three or four times a game, I think it's four times a game, they've only lost once. So, I mean, they they – I think that they do better when he's actually. Is there a reason why they have kind of stopped from that? You, Derek? Yeah, that sounds. <laughs> I know. Is there a reason it, why? Derek, Derek like. Is there a reason why you're 15 it, minutes as late soon to work? As I said it. I just thought of Derek. Um. First of all, I want to throw a caveat out there. Dak used his feet like a mofo the other night. He bailed himself out of so many situations. What does using, that stand for? Don't worry about it. <laughs> he bailed himself out of so many situations. Now, <laughs> designed carries and runs absolutely um it it doesn't make any sense to me that you would lean so heavily on on read option and never have the quarterback keep the ball especially not only has he demonstrated you know athleticism and the ability to pick it up but he's he's willing to like he i don't want to go as far as to say he looks for contact but actually yeah he kind of does i mean he's he's a big tough dude he's not afraid of tacklers and I know you don't want to get your quarterback hurt, but he can handle it a handful of times per game. And so that's are we blaming him? Absolutely not. Well, I mean, I mean, if, well, I mean, if, may, if it's an if it's an RPO, if he has the option, then yeah. it's on him. And maybe he's not seeing that look, or maybe. But that's the thing is, like, I think somebody very tongue in cheek was like, "Well, he he doesn't want to he doesn't want to take those hits because he like if you know anything about Dak, do you buy that? Nah, no, I don't buy that at all. I He's just a wonder, competitor. I just wonder if there are if if it's sort of his option, um, or or are they not getting the looks? And I mean, I can imagine clearly him saying that, it's like, "I'm not getting the looks. Like, do you do you want me to keep it on a defensive end that's staying home and yeah. and I you know I'm getting tackled for minus two? No." And I, I haven't looked at it closely enough to know what the looks were, but there are ways to there are ways to scheme that stuff. I mean, where has the quarterback draw been? We love that play. Yeah, we love that play, and I don't remember the last time they ran it. It seems like a perfect call for the red zone, honestly. Um, and it usually works when they do that in the red zone. It's the epitome of hidden yardage because Dak could finish a game with three carries. For, it doesn't even have to be like a 42-yarder like he did against Washington. He finished with three carries for nine yards, and two of those three picked up. You know, if you if you get nine yards and two of those carries are for eight, so two carries of four yards, you pick up two different third and shorts. And that is the difference between winning and losing sometimes. Uh, so... Yeah, they need to do it more. I don't know why that, that that was only the fourth time in his career he didn't carry the ball at all, and it probably just shouldn't happen. He's he's too useful as a runner. Again, I'm not asking him to do it 15 yeah. times a game, but it's very useful. Now, on a different topic, we know that Dak is still looking for a contract, and we know that Amari Cooper is still looking for a contract. With what has been going on injury wise. In regards to Amari Cooper and his leg and his foot, does this change anything as far as what you're thinking about his future here with the Cowboys? No. 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 I can do it in like six different octaves Get if you want choir? me to. I can no. do it in one. That one. That one. No. The baritone. No. He's, Why? Because he's awesome. He's missed. He's your first round draft pick this year. He missed one game, right? And, and by doing that, when they did that, you knew that that they're going to make this work. Remember, Amari's now keeping in mind that he himself, Amari, has said that he has battled with this foot thing. I forget the name uh, of the plantar fasciitis. Yes, he has battled with that through t- his career. I'll tell you basically. what, he's not battling his toes. His toes are good. That's <laughs> he he barely practiced last week and came out and made like four of the most absurd plays of the season in one night. Yeah, uh, and it mu- like I know we talked about it at the time. He must have been in a ton of pain hey. to leave that Jets game the way he did because he's fought through so much stuff, and it hasn't even seemed to bother him. I mean, the Jets game, he played three snaps and sat down, but other than that, has he just been a non-factor? In like, in I think he had like a forty, maybe he had like forty yards against Washington, but he still caught a touchdown. Yeah. He's been awesome all year. You know, while fighting through all this stuff, don't know what's going on with the Dak contract. I can't give you that one. There's a little bit more going on with Cooper as far as his agents and the. You probably heard this too, like the agency that uh, is going on there. Like, I think that they're 
splitting up and they're you know his his real agent is starting a, a different firm and so there's just a lot of stuff happening there that I, it slows I, the process yeah a little bit and i don't think cooper's in a big hurry he's yeah. he's just not but i, I think that one's going to happen but i don't really know what's holding up the DAC thing i mean i think we kind of i mean numbers i mean yeah guaranteed I, I think guaranteed money i've said it on here before i think the guaranteed money that that is that Goff and Wentz have is is way higher than Dak because of that's the money that they got when they when they were drafted, and so they put out a report over the weekend that was like you know no progress was made during the bye week, which means Dak is heading for the franchise tag, and I have heard nothing that suggests that that's true. I mean, obviously, if it gets to that point, that's what you would do, but I've I haven't heard anything that gives me the the indication that like well you know talks are done we're not like we're gonna have to tag him i haven't heard that at all jerry jones addressed it on the radio this week he was like the reporter that put that out doesn't know what he's talking about because i'm the only person in the world that's privy to all those details it's weird how like considering that they would have to franchise both of those guys or either one of those guys i should say and there's some wiggle room there because the transition tag is out there and the franchise tag point being it's mid-November, and those guys are unsigned, and I'm not super worried about it. No. I'm really not, because like, they're playing like badasses. They but, both want to be here. But there is a trickle-down effect, and it might go to Byron Jones or sure. somebody else that, of course. that you can't franchise because you're going to have to hold it for these guys, and maybe, you know... What's your, what, and you can only franchise one. Right. What's your year. confidence percentage that Dak and Amari are going to get long-term deals here? 99? Yeah. That's, I, yeah, no less than, like, 98%. So, I don't really know what the holdup is. I don't really know when it's going to happen, but... What about Byron Jones being here next year? That's, like... 48 for me. Really? Does it change if the head coach changes as far as to be like, well, no, I, I need a new quarterback. I need a different quarterback or something like that. I you know that's a that's a good question. It is a good question. But I, I, that won't be your head coach. Like, like Jerry's going to make sure to get somebody that can work with that's, Dak. Line so, one, which well, everything <laughs> Dak has shown through nine games. Like, if you can't work with him, yeah. yeah. Which most of the people listening to this show don't like the current head coach. Can you imagine if you sit down with the guy and he says, you know, well, first thing I would do is I, I'd probably want to draft the quarterback, and I would I say like, thank you for coming. <laughs> it's been fun. This thank is you. a very impressive pr- <laughs> uh, presentation that you gave us. The doors that way. Okay. Uh, most of the people listening to this don't think the current coaching staff is getting the most out of Dak. Would mm-hmm. you say that's fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. So, and he's still playing like a beast. Like, uh, if he's got a few less interceptions or a few more wins, he's in the MVP conversation. Hold, hold on, hold on. So, any coach you would hire should be able to work with him. I don't think it's that big of an ask. I, I don't know about that that statement you just made. I, I kind of was like, oh, yeah, yeah. But okay. But when you say it again... The current staff is not getting the most out of Dak. I mean, I said most of the people listening to the show think that. Okay, and that's what do you think about that? I mean, fourth round pick, compensatory pick. He's come in here. He's been the franchise quarterback for four years. I think they're getting a lot out of him. They're getting a ton out of him. I think in and actually, to be fair to what I just said, like I think John Kitna has done wonders for Dak. Mm -hmm. I think he's been fantastic. I guess my point just being. Little things like the fact that he didn't have a carry in that game, yeah. or some of the play calling. It, I mean, it. You know, thinking back to the New Orleans game, thinking back to the insistent on running on first and long situations all the time. I think, I think he could even still be better. Yeah, I guess is my and that's point. That's fair. I, I just, but I, I don't want to throw out there that we don't think this staff is is has done a good job with him because you know. Unless it's, no, everybody and, was wrong. You just haven't uh, maximized his abilities and his potential. You know, we, we did see we did see a growth when Kidna came in here, and that translated to what mm-hmm. Dak has been able to do so far. But I think, like Dave said, placing him in the right situation, and not just him, when you talk about the talent in general in the offense, and making sure you're 
calling plays that are suitable for your guys and trying to be more creative. You know, you keep talking about creativity and placing these guys in a better position rather than keep banging on and doing the same thing over and over. If if they were to hire a new coach and a candidate were to say, like, well, we'll have to change quarterbacks, like, go away, get out of it, that's, no, go, move on, push, push on. As they say. <laughs> and I don't think that would be the case for Cooper either. I mean, I think any coach that wants to coach the Cowboys, the, you'll be just fine with You're going to have to deal with a lot more, most of it off the field things that you have to, I'm just, to be okay with. You'll be fine with Cooper and Dak as your. As your we're really thinking we need a wide receiver. Like, why would we want a guy who can play all three positions and does something insane twice a game? I can't wait to see what happens when he has healthy feet and and legs and knees because wow. it's been battling something every game and it's you wouldn't know it. The Raiders are playing pretty well, so I'm not ready to completely call John Gruden an idiot. But I like what about Amari Cooper makes you think like well, we can't get it done with this guy. I don't know. I don't know what happened there. That that, that. well, he proved them wrong. He said that he wanted to make sure uh, he wanted to prove that the Cowboys were right by. Now, he but, always yeah. like he's always really taken the high road about that. Mm-hmm. Like he never talks about proving people wrong. He's just like I want to prove that they the Cowboys made a good yeah. decision. Now, the Raiders are going to be okay. They they have a winning record, I believe. And and, and or 500. They're going to keep getting They're picks. 5 and 4. They're 5 and 4. There you go. Thanks, they're Kyle. alive in the AFC wild card. And huh? they're going to get picks. I mean, they they, they had yeah. 3 this year, but they're going to probably get more. I mean, the, the, didn't the Bears uh, get They a, still have one from the Mac trade. Yeah, no, I mean They'll have some. They appear to be in pretty good shape. But they also got the third easiest schedule in the NFL for the rest of the year. Well, the AFC is. Uh, ugh, if the Cowboys were in the AFC, the narrative would be so much different. Well, you know? I mean, like where the Jets are, you mean? What, like in that division? I don't know, but the, but the Jets are in the AFC. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah, they lost to a bad Jets team. I'm just saying. Like, I know. I can't get stack up the stack up the AFC and the NFC and tell me which field you'd rather be competing I know. against. I get it. Sorry. Well, since we're in the coaching topic, let's go ahead and switch it to the defense side of okay. things. People keep asking back and forth, Chris Richard, Rob Marinelli, what is the dynamic there? Why have we, again, you can't compare one team from last year to this necessarily, but there's still a comparison there due to the fact of the same kind of group of people. Mm. How, do you think that there has been a difference there between that relationship and who has a bigger voice in the room now this year? I don't think so. Not I, really. I, I think that uh, they, there's a good understanding of of that. Um, I know this is the first year that Chris Richard has kind of taken over as the voice uh, to the media. Um, to you know that that's happened this this year with the. It'll happen here in about 30 minutes when the coordinators talk. Um, and, and I he, think that's a sign of how good their relationship is. That's honestly, a good point. yeah. Rod that's Marinelli, he's he's been the DC uh, in a variety of places forever. He's given more interviews than you could count. He was the head coach of a team, and Detroit, Detroit, yeah, he was 0-16. the head. Sixteen, yeah. He had to deal with that during an zero and sixteen season. He knows that Chris Richard wants to be a head coach, and that you need that type of experience. Like he he's having Chris Richard talk to the media as training like you need this if if you're going to take that step i think it's a good sign of the the friendly and you know respectful nature of their relationship i don't think there's any drama there at all i think i mean the defense is just so hard to figure out because their their stats suggest that they're they're one of the best uh against the run against the pass uh not giving up a lot of points but it hasn't been enough. It hasn't been enough to get a five and four record. But that's the funny thing is like, and you know we've had this conversation too. Like at the end of the day, they're still not like horrendous. You know, like I mean, you can watch the Lions. Like the Cowboys aren't thirtieth in the league. They're not bad, but it's the nature of this thing that when you lose games, you know, Chris mm-hmm. Richard, Chris Richard was the most popular man in Cowboy Nation all of last year. Like. And and a lot of people still do love him, and I I still think he's a good coach. But when things aren't going well, you're like, well, something must have changed. He sucks now. Well, like he must, him and Rod must hate each other, or well, you know, whatever. Or yeah, you just look for reasons. Or, to, or to it's just the nature of the NFL. I mean, Jalen Smith is this was his second year last year as a linebacker, and it was the first for Leighton Vanderesh. They're going to get better. And Byron Jones, first year as a corner, makes All Pro second team. He's going to get better. Cheeto is going to get better. Uh, that they got Robert Quinn, 
they're going to get better. And that's that's what hasn't happened. Is mm-hmm. They're not bad. They're just not better than what yeah. they were last year. And you all the signs pointed that they would be and should be. But they're just not clearly better. They're just kind of But not not your phone is not, not, not charging. Same. It's just it's holding its charge. It's just not up to 100%. God, that's so great. I love that. That's what it is. It, like when you like <laughs> You plug your phone in for 15 minutes yeah. and you come back expecting it to be 20, 30 percent right. higher, and you're like, "What the hell? It only bumped up two percent." Yeah, it it's didn't not. Die. It's that's sitting there. Oh, maybe you had a back cord and he stopped charging for like a second, and now you're down to 13 percent. I'm well, just saying, like, even when you compare to last year, actually, they're they're not playing bad, but. It's just not the plays are not as explosive as they were okay. last. Year. The expectation was elite, if and they are if not. We're, if we're going to keep the phone analogy, th- what this whole team has done, you know, that when it's crazy, when when you have a charger that's like it's on but it doesn't, yeah, uh, it, it, the uh, mechanism's not working right. Yeah, yeah. It, like it is charging if you hold it like this. But yeah, that's what the team is. It's like, is, are you we should, good? Are we not? Are we not? You should keep do this wiggling. for a living. <laughs> what podcasting? That's great. That's I love that analogy. There's nothing. To, to further it even more, like there's nothing more frustrating than oh. when you're like, well, if I bend the charger this way, I get some juice, and if I don't, then I hate that. You just it's the worst. You're like, what and are you doing? You're like, I'm just charging my phone. It's like, well, maybe you know, it's it's November fifteenth, and it's windy outside, so maybe they'll play better, but they're not. Blue and jersey, Nate Newton of blue, all people oh saying God. blue jerseys get. Blue jersey. Get on to Nate for saying that. Nate said it's the blue jersey's fault that they lost the other night. I cannot what'd believe. I, what did he say, though? So you know he's he said, listening. He said, <laughs> he's like, we don't wear blue at the crib. At the crib. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot believe that a Pro Bowl player blamed a loss on the jersey. Hey, speaking of Nate, they're coming up here yeah, pretty soon. Yeah, they're coming up next, Hang hanging with the boys. So make sure to stay put. And join them. They always have a fun time over there. Yep. So that's always a fun show. Now, that is all the time we have for today. Is there something else you want to say, Dave? No, I just no, I love that analogy so much. <laughs> like the, the Cowboys are a faulty cell phone. That's exactly what they are. <laughs> that is pretty bad. Given all the money that they make, yeah. you should be able to buy a good working charger. Anyways, <laughs> thank you so much for Nikki Min, David Hellman, and Member Garcia. This has been The Break on DallasCowboys.com Radio. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this,